Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah bless you all. I hope you're all well. <coughs> okay, let's start. Al Fatiha. Alhamdulillah. <coughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد صلاة تفرحه وتسعده وترضيه واجزه بها عنا ما هو أهله يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم زدنا ولا تنقصنا وأكرمنا ولا تهنا وأعطنا ولا تحرمنا وآثرنا ولا تؤثر علينا وأرضنا ورض عنا يا كريم so, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, <coughs> we were looking at this discussion of the Munafiqeen and how they don't follow the guidance, they don't listen to the guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to his messenger for everyone. And that's because of the diseases in their hearts. And these this, this, this disease in their hearts just increases and increases uh, simply because they just don't want to change and they don't want to accept the truth. They prefer whatever it is, their fame, their money and whatever ulterior motives they have. They prefer that to following the guidance that Allah has given. So they, you know, they lose their dunya, they lose their akhirah because of this so we ask Allah to protect us from this and you know someone in this situation should stop and reflect because once you're opposing God and they knew this it's not like they didn't know this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposed them time after time after time so someone in this situation should stop and reflect uh, about where they're going what's happening in life and Allah sends pe sends situations to people to shake them up and to make them reflect and unfortunately, most people, when a difficulty comes and whatever, they'll look at everything besides themselves. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, <coughs> they say that Okay. Allah, look at this. Do they not see that they are tried once or twice every year, yet they neither repent nor do they learn a lesson? So this is, you know, really something significant. He says, Awala yarawna. Do they not think? So ru'ya here, the seeing here is, in Arabic the word ru'ya can apply to seeing or reflecting. <coughs> right? So here, can they not see or can they not reflect back? And you know, and look at their situations that they're tried. Yuftanun fitna in Arabic uh, means to shake something up, shake it to its core. And when something's shaken, uh, your ability when when a person's shaken, your your capacity and your ability to remain strong and firm in this situation becomes apparent. So this is why the word is used to when talking about testing gold. Like if you had a coin made out of gold and then some other metals, they'd heat it to see how much is actually gold and how much is other metals because when it's heated, they separate. So that's what fitna means. So when someone's shaken to their core and it's used to see something, right? What, are the, what is this person made of? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Awala yarawna, do they not see that they're tried like this, shaken up in every year, am. Am is a good year, right? As opposed to sana, which is uh, refers to a bad year. That you know, do they not see that they're shaken up uh, in this way? They tried once or twice, and Imam Abu Saud says that once or twice here refers to multiple times. You can do this in Arabic language. It's very rich in these sorts of usages. For example, uh, when someone goes for a Hajj or a Umrah, you say la baik. Right, labbaik, Allahumma labbaik, and labbaik is labba, you know, twice, right? The two, uh, the talbiya, you, you, you're saying it twice, but you translate it as, you know, uh, uh, as I'm always at your service, I will always respond, or ever at your service, right? <coughs> so, <clears throat> so they tested and tried multiple times. 
whether it's through illness or whether it's uh, through a problem, whether it's through defeat or whether it's through them being exposed by a surah, uh, you know, multiple times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it clear to them that, uh, you know, that they're wrong and that they've rejected God, they've rejected his messenger and they've rejected the guidance that Allah's given and they need to do something about it. They need to change. But what happens? He says, uh, moreover and then after all that when it's expected that it should you know they've been shaken up and they should think you know what we don't want to be like this anymore and they should turn back thumma, and then shockingly layatubun. they don't repent they don't turn back to Allah they don't return and realign themselves to Allah with iman and you know fixing their deeds and fixing <coughs> their heart in fixing their obedience to Allah and His Messenger. They don't. وَهُمْ لَا يَذَّكَّرُونَ Not in the slightest. And they don't reflect. يَذَّكَّرَ يَذَّكَّرُونَ There's a couple of words like this in the Quran. يَتَذَكَّر which means long reflection, uh, spending a long time reflecting, reflecting on something. But here, yadhakar, yadhakarun is like a powerful blow, like it hits you in the heart and you think, whoa, you know, you have this big realization and it dawns on you, I've been wrong all this time. But because they just keep entertaining the diseases in their hearts and, you know, they want to go around mocking the believers and they want to <clears throat> see, see the truth fail, despite knowing it's true, they don't reflect. Not in the slightest. وَهُمْ لَا يَذَّكَّرُونَ Not in the slightest at all. So this powerful reminder that should shake them up and make them think, well, you know, I need to be better, I need to stop doing this. That doesn't happen at all. And that's because of their own kufr. In fact, what do they do when the guidance and the reminder comes? They want to get away from uh, from it completely. So this is what we see in the next. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا مَا أُنزِلَتْ سُورَةٌ Whenever at even the ma is in addition to say uh, in any time. Whenever إذا ما أنزلت سورة نظر بعضهم إلى بعض when a surah is revealed, they look at one another, saying, "هل يراكم من أحد is anyone watching you? Can anyone see you?" ثم صرف صرف الله قلوبهم بأنهم قوم لا يفقهون. Then they slip away. It is Allah who has turned their hearts away because there are people who do not comprehend. So, <clears throat> it was clear when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam received revelation, he was physically, he'd, uh, he'd experienced things. Like, you know, one time he was on a camel and the camel, because of, you know, it seemed like he physically got heavier and the camel had to kneel. It could no longer stand because of the weight of <coughs> their revelation and its effect so and sometimes you know he'd he'd start perspirating sallallahu alayhi wasallam and so it was clear so when a section of of a, a surah or entire surah was revealed about them what would these munafiqun do the believers would be there oh the quran's come good let's hear it and don't forget the quran is miraculous and we're just Touching on the meanings here and the outward meanings, but once you know someone really understands the Arabic language and you know you compare it to others, just hearing it, just listening to it, it it can just give you an absolute sense of certainty. No one can replicate this, right? And all of the Arabs, you know, the contemporaries of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, all saw it. So believers, the believers would be there, happy, expecting more good from their Lord. And these people, what would they do? They'd look at each other, you know, from the sides of the eyes. You know, like, not has, has anyone seen you? No, let's go. And so they'd get up and they'd slip out. Lest the surah says something about them and, ex and expose them. But this is what they are. Because they've turned away from the guidance. They turn away, as the verse says, so the guidance doesn't, doesn't benefit them. <coughs> so he says, they look at each other. نَظْرَ بَعْضُهُمْ إِلَىٰ بَعْضُ They look at each other. 
saying or indicating, Hal yarakum min ahad? Is anyone here watching you? Or they're all distracted? If not, no one? Okay, let's go. Thumman sarafu, and shockingly again, in so, it's as though they automatically, in sarafa, something to happen or to, be, to be diverted automatically. They, or they can't help it. The diseases in their hearts are so severe that they can't help it, they can't remain there. It's as though they're automatically uh, moved away. So then he says, Saraf Allah Qulubahum. Allah has di- diverted their hearts away from the guidance. Allah has turned their hearts away from all of the good. Because they're a people who just don't understand anything. Right, we talked about fiqh uh, last time, uh, how it means deep understanding. These people don't understand the the first point of fiqh, deep understanding, is to know that the akhirah lasts forever. This life ends at your death, and wherever you end up in the akhirah, paradise or hell, you know you 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 could be in either destination uh, permanently. And we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to make us of the people who are in paradise forever and the people who are not even brought, who don't even go near the hellfire right because of how severe the hellfire is and you know how long they could spend there and for, for disbelievers in eternity so it's such knowingly knowingly risking your akhirah it's not an intelligent move and that's why we see people who deliberately reject God and deliberately reject, you know, faith. And after knowing the truth, we, you know, it, it's not a sign of intelligence. And they can use, you know, the most complicated arguments in the world. But on the day of judgment, it's going to be very clear. These people chose to oppose God. There's their destination. <coughs> <coughs> We're not even talking about. <coughs> Um, we're not even talking about situations where someone doesn't know, hasn't come across any guidance. They're excused, but people who know and knew the truth, these people who were in the company and the presence of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and yet they still chose to turn away, they still chose to entertain the diseases in their hearts, so they don't believe. They're the ones who brought loss, you know, the biggest harm onto them themselves. So Allah says, Allah diverted their hearts away. They, you know, they passively. It's almost as though because it's so ingrained within them. Whenever the surah came, let's not get exposed. Let's get out of here. It's almost as though they passively, you know, leave the scenario. Allah says He actively re- diverts them right away from the guidance. They've rejected it so many times, gone because they don't understand the consequences or. This is also an active thing. It's not like they don't have the capacity to. They choose not to. And then, so, you know, this is something, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed them, blessed the Arabs with the perfect guidance of the Qur'an. And it's not as if it was just, you know, a rational uh, concept that they had to understand. Allah sent a perfect messenger who embodied the best qualities any human being has ever had qualities of perfection and excellence in his relationship with God and excellence in his relationship with his fellow human beings. He was from amongst them. He lived, he lived amongst them. They knew him. They knew his family. They saw him interact with people. They dealt with him in finances. Everything. He was, his conduct was impeccable. Al-fadlu ma shahidat bihil a'da. True virtue is what your enemies testify. And what do they call him? Al Amin. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in Mecca and before he left Mecca, uh, the people who were trying to kill him, he ensured Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib remained behind and returned the trusts and the, the, the things that they gave to the Messenger to look after. To, uh, Sayyidina Ali returned them to those people. The people who wanted to kill him and who f- um, opposed him for you know over a decade in Mecca, 13 years, they're the ones who would come to him and say, please look after this for us. It's too valuable. I can't leave it in the house. What does that say? That he's a truthful, honest man. So when he came with miracles, with a perfect book, with his own perfect, you know, perfect qualities and said, this is a message from God, why did they turn away? This is not the sign of intelligence. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
by God, right? There's an implied oath. لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتُمْ حَرِيسٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَؤُوفُ الرَّحِيمُ What a beautiful verse. There has come to you a tremendous uh, messenger from amongst yourselves concerned over your suffering, anxious over you. Towards the believers, he is compassionate and merciful. Look at this. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts the verse by saying, لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ By God, truly, he swears an oath to really make the Arabs think and reflect on this point. The surah, as we've seen right at the beginning, is surah to Tawbah. Allah wants people to turn back to him. So he sent this amazing messenger to them. Look at him. This is what a messenger would be if Allah sent him, sent one. And look, he, that, that is his role. Allah has sent him with proofs. Rational proofs, miracles, and the book, which makes perfect sense. And you can read the Quran, and it's clear that this is from from God, right? So he says, "Laqad jaakum." Jaa indicates, you know, the root word is used to indicate something coming. There's some tangent, some some additional meanings, either for something to be slow, but that's not the case here. That's not the meaning intended. It means something tremendous. So. A tremendous messenger has come to you. So we can understand that he's tremendous from the word ja'a. And then he used the word rasulun. Uh, a messenger, but what a messenger. As Abu Saud puts it, a tremendous, amazing, fantastic messenger. <laughs> I've run out of adjectives. It's just what an amazing prophet he is, sallallahu alayhi wa this amazing messenger who's delivering your Lord's message to you, wanting good for you, wanting benefit for you, he has come to you, right? It's as though normally people go on this long journey to go find, you know, find themselves or find guidance. He's come to you. Min anfusikum, from yourselves. Now there's two uh, um, interpretations, either from yourselves as in humanity or either from yourselves as in the Arabs. So the strongest position is that it's the Arabs because they're the people, <coughs> they're the people who, who saw the Prophet wasallam in his lifetime. They spent time with him before revelation came to him, after revelation came to him. They knew what he was like. They knew people who knew him and every account that they heard about him wasallam, would only verify his you know truthfulness and you know his impeccable conduct and character sallallahu alaihi wasallam so it's like the arabs had no reason to disbelieve in him he came with the book that was perfect his own way and conduct everything was just perfect sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then on top of that he says azizun alayhi ma anittum incredibly hard and difficult on him is what you suffer meaning the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he wasn't just a distant person someone who just come i've just come to deliver my message you do what you want after that no he cared for them and <coughs> and he's saying that the difficulties that the believers suffered and that what the believers suffer is hard on him. He feels pain at seeing them in difficulties. I imagine someone like this with so much empathy when he sees another person in pain, he, he finds it difficult. Aziz, we talked about this word before, Ardun Azaz, land that's so hard, nothing can grow out of it. So this feeling of seeing others suffering is unbearable. It's very difficult for him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, look at a person like this, and then who knows what the reality of the hellfire is, right? On the Mi'raj, he was shown the hellfire. And then this, he came back, and still he's wanting to guide those people who uh, insulted him, who physically harmed him, who mocked him. He still wanted that to guide them because he didn't want them to go to the hellfire. At the Battle of Uhud, when Quraysh targeted him and they came to try and attack him, he, you know, the Sahaba said, pray against them, right? And he said, Allahumma hadi qawmi fa'innahum la ya'lamun. Oh Allah, guide my people. They don't know, right? He he prayed for them because of this immense empathy and you know 
care that he had for everyone, right? And but for the believers, especially, you know, when they suffer difficulty, he, you know, he felt a lot of pain from this. So you can tell he wants good for them. And even the munafiqeen and <clears throat> the idolaters, he wanted them all to believe so they can be safe in the akhirah. Harisun alaykum. And uh, the word haris, so um, you see sometimes the imams in mosques, uh, when they're reciting the, this verse, they stop at haris, and that's a waqf qabih. That's a very bad place to stop, because the word haris on its own, it means <clears throat> someone who's got a great avid desire for something. But uh, the Messenger of Allah was not like this. He was uh, harisun alaykum. With, with alaykum, it means that he's great... He had a great desire for you, i.e. for good to come to you, the, the Arabs and you know the believers, for, for, for benefit to come to you, for all harm to be away from you and for you to benefit in the maximal way in this life and the next. So it was this selfless love, care and affection and a desire for much good for, the, you know, for, for believers and for the Arabs who are being addressed in this. Bil mu'minina ra'ufur rahim and to the believers, he is Raufun Rahimun. Some of the ulama said that Allah uh, hasn't uh, hasn't given two of his own names to anyone else but him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the word Rauf <coughs> from Ra'fa, some of the ulama said Rauf means for all harm to be uh, repelled from them. <coughs> and for Rahim means for all good to come to them. If you look at the root word of, of Ra'fa, it's, this, it's more intense than Rahim. It has this meaning of someone being incredibly uh, merciful, kind, but more that they have this deep tenderness and softness to them, and to the point that they can't bear to see another in pain. Right. You, you see that, for example, with mothers. You know, many people that they can't bear to see the, their child crying. It causes them distress. And so Allah said that about the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his ra'ufun, indefinite, in an amazing way. Our suffering, as we saw earlier, causes him distress. And so he, he, he was like that towards the believers, characterized with this ra'fa. So therefore, yes, he doesn't want harm to come to them. And rahim, and rahim is this permanent, tender kindness ever kind and merciful and <clears throat> and good but rahma can entail at times you know a bit of firmness for example you know someone allah someone uh not wanting their child to burn themselves when they're about to when the child's about to put his his hand in the fire so the parents you know might raise his voice no stop and so that's also from Rahmah. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had both of these intensely caring and compassionate uh, qualities within him which he directed towards Bil Mu'mineen, towards those who are firm. So he does love, care and compassion and you know mercy directed towards the believers in a special way but then there's a general mercy and a general desire for the good and well-being of this life and the next to come to everyone that's how he was sallallahu alayhi wasallam but in this situation there were people who believed and there were people who disbelieved and he had a, a very difficult time uh, you know with you know the challenges that the idolaters and the others were uh, were posing <clears throat> so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed him and said, for in tawallaw, and if they turn away, if they do a one eighty and just turn away, walk off, فَقُلْ حَسْبِيَ Allah, حَسْبِيَ اللَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ وَهُوَ رَبُّ الْعَرْشِ الْعَظِيمِ And if they turn away, then say, my sufficiency, the thing uh, you know, that's enough for me is my Lord. So Allah, the Supreme King, is my sufficiency. La ilaha illa huwa. There is no God. There is no deity but Him. Alayhi tawakkaltu. In Him I place my trust. Wa huwa rabbul arshi al-azim. And He's the Lord of the Supreme Throne. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the messenger, and <clears throat> there's lessons in this for us as well. You know, you're trying to do good, trying to please Allah, but then things aren't going your way, people are turning away, you turn to Allah. Allah can take care of it. So for in tawallu, if they all turn away, they don't want to believe and they walk walk away, 
فَقُلْ يُو سَيْ So he's saying it, but he's also living it and being characterized, characterized by this tawakkul. Hasbi Allah, my sufficiency, that what will, what is enough for me and for me to rely on is Allah, the Supreme King. Hasbi Allah, Hasbi Allah. La ilaha illa huwa. Why is that? Because he is God, and there's no other God but Him. He is the capital G God. Uh, he is the only supreme being. In existence, you know, the one who created everything. There's no one else like him. There's no other deity, nothing. All the rest are false. And then he says, so therefore, right, <clears throat> that's why he's enough for him. So therefore, alayhi tawakkaltu. I put all of my trust in him. And tawakkul is rooted, uh, connected to the root word of wakala. Where you choose someone, you take care of this for me. So he's saying, Allah is enough for me. Why? Because he's the only God and he can do absolutely everything. So he puts his full trust in him. Oh Allah, you take care of this. I can't manage it. Oh Allah, you're the one who has absolute power. And alayhi tawakkaltu. And so then the question comes, will Allah be able to take care of it? Absolutely. Wa huwa rabbul arshil azim. And he... Uh, whilst no, no, not whilst, and he, and he is the Rob, the master of the supreme throne, Al Azim, right? The supreme throne. This throne is this creation. So we talked about the universe, and then being the first sky and the second sky, containing it, and the third and the fourth vast distances, and then the throne of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala surrounds everything. And he is the master of that. And then generally, if you look at the words, uh, the verses refer referring to the throne, they talk about <clears throat> the management and the governance of everything that exists. So Allah, who's taking care of all of these things at every moment, he can take care of me. He can take care of my affair. I put my trust fully in him. And that's what it comes down to. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would help the messenger and give him victory. And that's what happened. And Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. With, with that, with this blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we've completed Surah At-Tawbah. Allah, and it's a, it's a huge gift and a huge blessing. And so we'll continue next, inshaAllah ta'ala, with Surah Yunus. And so the next three surahs, Surah Yunus, Surah Hud and Surah Yusuf, were all revealed during a very difficult time. So there's a lot of encouragement for patience and you know, reflecting on the, the tribulations of uh, the people of the past. Uh, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit us tremendously through that, through those surahs. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين